we've got neurotransmitter released from the presynaptic neuron that's going to bind to receptors on the cell that it's talking to, the postsynaptic cell. There are two types of receptors. One is ionotropic. These are, this is direct signaling. What happens with this? A neurotransmitter binds to this receptor and opens the channel. What's another word for this type of protein here? Well, it's ligand or chemically gated. And what's gonna happen, do you think, when it opens? Probably an ion is gonna go through it. So it's a chemically gated, also called ligand gated. A chemical is a type of ligand ion channel. This could be sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium. You've seen all these in different places, right? So depending on what kind of protein it is and where it's located on the cell. So this is a fast response. It's a direct response. So the response is quick. The neurotransmitter is going to cause a effect in the postsynaptic cell that is quick. As in this case, let's actually make it some other color. Let's say that this is going to allow a bunch of ions that were out here, positively charged ions. Oh, they're awful. Positively charged ions are going to enter the cell. That's what happens with sodium, right? So quick. The other type of signaling is indirect. This is also called metabotropic. So remember G protein coupled receptors. I've talked about these twice before. We're going to see them in an example this time. So hopefully it'll kind of be review and then bring things together in terms of an example of when they're used. So in this case, um, this is a G protein coupled receptor. You can see the G protein down here, this G protein is going to activate a second messenger. So this is also called a second messenger system. That second messenger is the chemical messenger that's inside the cell. This is the first messenger to get from cell to cell. This is the second messenger. Well, I don't have it. It's going to use a second messenger. Typically, we'll talk about CAMP cyclic AMP, it's not always CAMP. There's different second messenger systems based on what protein is the receptor is. So this is ultimately gonna result in changes inside the cell. So activating other proteins, metabolic changes, indirectly opening ion channels, but it is a slower response then and more variable, right? So we can have more than one thing happen, it gets more complicated. We're not gonna go into a whole lot of the comp complications. You could study this for a whole PhD thesis. So let's do a learning check with reviewing the basics of this G protein coupled CAMP system. Could you draw out the steps in this pathway? Here's the start. We've got an extracellular signal. This for example, could just be the actual ligand, right? This a chemical messenger. What's the first step? This is going to bind to receptor. And that is going to do something to the G protein. So starting here, could you walk through the steps involved ultimately to get to changes in protein activity, metabolic changes inside the cell? I can give you the first, and here's some other key terms you may find useful in doing that. Could you relate these terms in that pathway? Here's the first step. The extracellular signals, that ligand, is going to cause the G protein to be active. What does that do? 
that causes inactive adenylyl cyclase to become active. This is a enzyme that converts ATP to cyclic AMP. So that's what's gonna happen here. Cyclic AMP, that's our second messenger. The whole point of activating this signal transduction cascade, this signal pathway here, is to activate the second messenger, which then can do a whole lot of other stuff. The example I want to, to look at right now is that protein kinase. So remember kinases are proteins that pho phosphorylate other proteins. So they add a phosphate group. That's going to change the structure of the other protein and therefore changes activity. So it's a way of turning other proteins off and on. This then creates an altered cellular response. For example, heart muscles contracting faster. So the last step shown here is the protein, various proteins, right? Many proteins, um, the target proteins of the system inside the cell, other enzymes, then you have a pathway that enzyme activates other enzymes. It's a, it's a mess, but it's an organized mess, right? It's evolutionarily designed to work and to create some physiological response. These then have altered activity. So we're not changing gene expression directly here, although some of these proteins could change gene expression, but we're changing the activity of existing proteins. But this takes longer, right, than directly just opening ion channels. So let's look at an example of this. Let's look at acetylcholine receptors. These are also called cholinergic receptors, and you've seen these, right? So we've got two, we talked already about the direct type. We're also going to talk about the indirect. The direct, that's our neuromuscular junction, right? So that's where we have acetylcholine bind to a chemically gated ion channel. This is a different schematic, right? You also could draw the, the previous picture drew this like more like this. You gotta be flexible with how you see these pictures because they're drawn different ways. Um, when this binds, it's gonna open the ion channel. So it's ligand gated. Um, once you have acetylcholine bind, it changes the shape of the protein and allows sodium to enter the cell. Where does this occur? at the neuromuscular junction. So I'm sorry, this is called the nicotinic receptor. You've seen these. And this is located at the skeletal muscle neuromuscular junctions. So this specifically would be on the muscle cell itself. Right, the skeletal muscle. Actually, I don't need to do that. Embedded in the membrane. So this would be, for example, the skeletal muscle. That's what we saw before. I'm also telling you, this is located on the ganglion neurons, right? Remember that pre-ganglionic neuron is going to synapse onto a post-ganglionic neuron, releases ACH here at the ganglia. So this is where the receptors are going to be located, the nicotinic receptors. You may have noticed another thing popped up here already. So this is called a muscarinic receptor. It also binds acetylcholine. It's located in different places in the body, but both types bind acetylcholine. This is gonna have indirect effects when acetylcholine binds, which means instead of opening ion channels and causing sodium to rush in, it's going to activate a G protein. So this is what that looks like here time the, the ACH binds, G protein activated. What is this whole pathway here? This is our cyclic AMP camp pathway. To have metabolic effects changes in the cell. One last thing I wanna to do to contrast these two. So first of all, pause if you need to take this in. This is 
bringing stuff together. It's an example of an ionotropic and a metabotropic receptor. That the same neurotransmitter binds to either receptor. And then these receptors are located at different places in the body. And that's what allows acetylcholine to have different effects in different places in the body. Where does this happen then? So where are these receptors located? Can you remember that? It is those visceral receptors of the PNS, of effectors, I'm sorry, of the peripheral nervous system. So the effector organs. So for example, the heart. This inside here would be the cytoplasm of a cell, of a cardiac muscle cell. Or it could be an intestinal smooth muscle. Not all of these effectors are excitable tissues. So we can't rely on just ions moving in. We got to have something more complicated. So for those of you who kind of want to put this together, cell signaling is not just about depolarizing the cell. We also have to be able to have these other effects of changing enzymes for tissues that aren't excitable, right? Not all tissues are excitable. So that's where these G protein coupled receptors are really important is they often are what allow cell, one cell to communicate with a non-excitable cell to do, have allowed to do something besides excite, or even if it is an excitable cell, like the heart, allow it to do something besides just excite, but also make this protein, turn off this protein, et cetera. Okay, I would like to pause here and do norepinephrine in a separate video in order to break things up.